<coughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our virtual Mr. Burish here. We're holding Mr. Burish, Halak Aleph, and we will be learning today, Mr. Hashem, Daf Chaf Beis Amad Aleph. We are continuing to learn Hilchas Tzitzitz, and we pick up today on Chaf Aleph Amad Beis. We are in Simon Yud Aleph in the midst of Sif Tess. Now, we did some of the Mishtabura on Sif Tess already, but not all of it. We're up to Mishtabura, Ice Cotton Membez. But for ease of um, transition and to provide context, I'm going to read the Mechaber from the beginning of Sif Tess. So the Mechaber said in Sif Tess, Yasen Nekev, in order to affix the tzitzit strings to the Beged, Yasen Nekev, we make a hole in the beged of the talus or the talus cotton or whatever four-cornered beged we're putting tzitzits on, we make a hole in the beged, ba'erech ha-talus, along the length, along the height of the talus, loy l'mayla mishalosh etzbois, we don't place that hole higher than three finger breaths off of the end of the garment. And now the Ramah inserts the words, when we speak about shalish at spice, three finger breaths, what does that mean? Says the Ramah, Hainu Gudlin. This means thumb breaths, the width of the thumb at the knuckle of the thumb. So says the Ramah. So what did the Machabra say so far? When we affix the talus to the, the, the tzitzis to the talus, we're going to make a hole in the talus and we're going to insert the strings through that hole. Precisely where should the hole be made? Says the Mechaber, you go down to the bottom of the Beged, measure up from the bottom, and the hole should not be higher off of the end of the Beged than three finger breaths. The Ramah defined the finger breaths as three times the width of the thumb, but let's take a look right away at Mr. Bray's Cotton Membez, where the Chavetz Chaim says, Hainu Gudlin, I la'el sivkat yutes. He sends us back to sivkat yutes for the definition of goodlin. However, if I invite us achayim, he tells us to take a look at the sefer arts achayim. The masik who concludes the lachatchila yisur toiv limdoi da sholish et spoys ba'ama kimitz of azeres hasmuchin lezelaze. We should not lachatchila use the thumb breath. Instead, we should use the last three fingers of the hand. It should be three. Finger breaths. Vayin bebir halacha. Okay, so now we know that the hole in the beged cannot be distanced from the bottom of the beged more than three finger breaths. Why not? Says the Mechaber. Mipnei she'enei nikra knaf. Because if you go higher than that on the beged, then you're not putting the tzitzis al kanfei bigdehem. You're not putting the tzitzits on the knaf, on the corner. You're putting the tzitzits on the beged proper. The, obviously, there is some place on the beged that is called the corner of the beged. How high does the corner go? At what point are you now off the corner and onto the beged proper? Says the Bechaber, the height of three finger breaths. If you go higher than three finger breaths, off the bottom edge of the beged, you're no longer on the corner. Now you're on the beged proper. And the Mishnah Bruce says this, a nice cut in Mem Gimel. Higher than that is no good. She ain't a nikra knaf. And says the Chavetz Chaim, Uma akev afilu dievet. And if you place the tzitzit higher than that, it's ma'akev. It renders the tzitzit's puzzle even with dievet. Va'afilu im la'acha she'asa by tzitzit. Va'afilu rak chulya achas. Let's say you made a hole in the beged. You put the four strings in, you loop them around the corner of the baguette, and you made a knot, and you started turning the string around, you know, making the coils around the other strings of the gdil. And then you realized, hey, wait a second, I think that the hole is in the wrong place. I think the hole is too high up off the end of the baguette. Says the Chavetz Chaim. Even if after you inserted the tzitzis into the beged, even if you only turned one turn of the coils, now you went ahead and there's that hole in the beged, and the hole was placed too high. So the tzitzis are going to be too high. So you know what you did? You took a knife 
and you made a slit from the bottom of the, of the hole going down. So now the tzitzis will fall into that slit, and now the tzitzis will be closer to the bottom of the beged, and now it'll be within three finger breaths. So again, you made the hole over three finger breaths. You started tying on the tzitzis. Then you realized it was too high. So you made a slit in the bottom of the hole to allow the tzitzis to hang further down in the beged, so now it should be within three finger breaths of the bottom of the beged. Does that work? Says the Kavitz Chaim, no. I feel like possible, the tzitzis would still be possible. Remember what we learned. When you affix the tzitzis to the beged, you have to put the tzitzis into the beged bekashras. The tzitzis have to be made in a way that they're kosher. If you make the tzitzis in a way that they're puzzle, and then you make some kind of alteration to make them kosher, that's tasa v'loymona asui. Tarek Doshe says, v'asu lahem tzitzis. They al gedilim tasalach al arba kamfais kesusacha. The gedilim tasalach, you have to make the gedilim, you have to make the tzitzis al arba kamfais kesusacha on a beggar of dal kamfais, everything ready, everything kosher for tzitzis. If you make the tzitzis in an oifen that they're puzzle, and then you slit the hole to make it kosher, you didn't have an asiya bekashris, and now it'd be puzzle because of tasa v'loim in Continues the Chavetz Chaim. V'afilu im la'achar. Whoops, I think I no, I wrong line. V'hu adin ipcha, and so too in the opposite case says the Chavetz Chaim. Kishet tala on toich kesher agudel. Let's say you made you affixed the tzitzit to the beged too low. We didn't read that piece of the mechaber yet. The same way there's a problem if you affix the tzitzit too high. If you put the tzitzit more than three finger breaths off the bottom, so then it's possible because then you put the tzitzit in the beged and not on the knaf. So too, you can't place the tzitzit too close to the bottom of the beged. If you go too close to the bottom of the beged, then it's not al haknaf, then it's mitachas leknaf. Then you put the tzitzit under the corner, not on the corner. So you can't go too high. And you can't go too low. Says the Chavetz Chaim, let's say you went too low. You tied the tzitzit on within Kesher Agudel. We're going to see the shear of Kesher Agudel is from the knuckle of the thumb to the fingertip. Right? That's how much you have to distance the tzitzit off the bottom. Let's say you went lower than that. Okay, so now the tzitzit are fixed to the begin too low. It's Tachas Akonov. And it's puzzle. Now you want to make an alteration to fix that. So what did you do? Chatach lamayla babeged. So now you made a slit in the hole going up. In the previous case, you made a slit in the hole going down to pull the tzitzit lower down. Now you're doing the opposite. Now you make a slit in the hole going up and you slide the tzitzit up. The hella tzitzit lamayla mikesh ragudl. You slide the tzitzit up so that they're more than a Kesher HaGudl high off the bottom of the Beged, V'tafar Lamata, and you sew up the slit so that they will remain higher. Oi, or, Talamatlis Alaknaf, or, you want to distance the tzitzits further from the bottom of the, uh, bottom edge of the Beged, so you sew on an extra piece on the bottom of the Beged. Does that work? Says the Chavetz Chaim, no. Have a Gamkein Tasev Eloimena Osoi, in both of these cases, again, the tzitzis would be possible because of tasa v'loimina osui. In both of these cases, the tzitzis were not made bekashras. You affixed the tzitzis to the beged in an oifen where there would be possible. And then you made some kind of an alteration to the beged so that now it should become kosher. That's a psal of tasa v'loimina osui. Now the Chavetz Chaim makes what seems to be a little bit of a zaitika point. Says the Chavetz Chaim, talus shalt semer. Let's say you have a woolen talus. And it has tzitzits on it in a perfectly kosher manner. So you have a, a woolen talus cotton, or you have a woolen talus gadol, and it has four beautiful corners of tzitzits affixed to it, and everything was done bekashras. The holes are all in the right place. The tzitzits are all the right way. The, everything is fine. The nimtza bigdil shal meshi. 
Chutin shall pishtan. Then you know what happened? On the edge of this beged, they made a beautiful silk border. And in that silk border, you found woolen thread. You found linen threads. Oh, so now you have a problem. What do you have now? Now you have a woolen garment with a silk edging and you have linen threads in the silk edging. Now the silk edging is attached to a woolen garment. So now you have wool and linen. What does that equal? Shotness. So now you have a talus or a talus cotton that can't be worn. But it's not that it can't be worn because of Hilchus Tzitzitz. It can't be worn because of Hilchus Shatnas. It's not because of Arachayim, it's because of Yeridea. So what's going on here? What's the what's the Kavitz Chaim trying to tell us? So again, Talus Shel you have a Talus made out of wool. Shaisa Mitzu Yeses Kilachasa. That is properly affixed with Kosher Tzitzitz. V'nimtza Bigdil Shel Meshi Shaisa Mesfasa Talus. And now on the silken edge of the talus, you found chutin shel pishtan, linen threads. So now you can't wear this talus because of shatnas. V'hutzrechul lishleif hagdil min talus. Now you need to remove that silk edging off of the talus because it has linen in it. So now you might think that there's a tasa v'loim and asli problem. Why? Because five minutes ago, you had a talus that couldn't be worn. Why couldn't it be worn? Because it had chatness. But the bottom line is, it was a talus that couldn't be worn. You fixed the problem. How did you fix the problem? By removing the problematic silk edging that had linen in it. So now you're removing the linen and you take away the chatness problem. Now the talus could be worn. Well, is this a talus of loyman or also a problem? Originally, the tzitzits were put into a baghead that couldn't be worn. It was a baghead of chatness. Now you took away the shotness. Is that a tasa of loyim and asli problem? Says the Chavetz Chaim, Roy lahachmir. It would be proper to be, rule stringently lahatir atzitzitz and to remove the tzitzitz velachser lekasherim and to put them back on to take away from a potential tasa of loyim and asli issue. Now, not everybody agrees with this, <clears throat> and the reason they don't agree with it is is simple. The reason they don't agree with it is because they look at this case and they say, over here, why was the talus not wearable? When you affixed the tzitzitz to this talus, mitame hilchas tzitzitz. Was there anything wrong here? No. From a hilchas tzitzitz standpoint, this was a perfect talus and it was affixed with perfectly kosher tzitzitz. So there's no psul in hilchas tzitzitz here. The problem was you can't wear it because it's a baggage of shotness. Okay, so fine, I can't wear it because it's shotness. Once I take away the shotness, I can wear it. How is that passive alignment of Osui as far as Hilchas Tzitzis is concerned? So not everybody agrees with this halacha brought down by the Chavetz Chaim. <clears throat> okay, let's go back to the Mechaber. Bottom line, Chavalaf and Beis. So we learned that the tzitzits have to be distanced off of the bottom of the beged by three finger breaths. And we said, why is that? Because the tzitzits have to be located al kanfe bigdehem. The tzitzits have to be located on the corner. And if you go higher than three finger breaths off of the bottom of the beged, you're no longer on the corner, you're in the beged proper. Now, says the Mechaber, you also can't put the tzitzit on the beged too low, says the Mechaber. V'loy lamata, you can't affix the tzitzit to the beged lower, mi keshir sheyesh mi kesher gudl ad hatzipayrin. Lower than the distance that exists from the knuckle of the thumb until the tip of the thumb. You have to distance the tzitzit at least that much off of the bottom of the beged, and that comes to approximately three and a half centimeters. If I use my uh, my ruler over here, I'm getting on my thumb approximately three and a half centimeters. So the tzitzits have to be located at least three and a half centimeters off the bottom and not higher. Let's see what I get. Let's see what I get with Shalisha Spice. I'm getting approximately five centimeters. So somewhere between three and a half centimeters and five centimeters. 
that's where the tzitzits have to be affixed. Now, what's wrong with going too high? What's wrong with going too high is it's not al kan dayem, it's on the Begit. What's wrong with going too low? Says the uh, says the Mechaber, but last word, Chafalaf of Bebez, Mishur Mishenemar al Hakonof. It says the tzitzis have to go on the knaf. Vim hayalamata mimaloi kesher gudel. And if it's lower than that three and a half centimeter distance to the bottom of the baghead, hayatachas hakonof. That's no longer called al hakonof. That's not called you affix the tzitzis to the corner. That's called you affix the tzitzis under the corner. And that's not where the tzitzis are supposed to be. Says the Mishnabura, ice cotton memdalu, near the bottom of Kavala from the base. Velay lamato, you can't put the tzitzis too low towards the bottom of the beged. O ma'akev af bidyeved, and the Chavetz Chaim says this would be ma'akev even bidyeved. If you put the tzitzis too low, the tzitzis are puzzle even bidyeved. Venerally, and the Chavetz Chaim says it appears to him, shemekay manekev, that the proper location for the hole for the tzitzis. It should be a little bit higher than that shear, than the three and a half centimeters. So it's not only where the actual tzitzits, but where the hole should be. Of course, when we're taking all of these measurements, we have to use the Thumb of an average sized individual. Ice cut memvav. The words of the Mechaber were, Mikesher agudel, from the knuckle of the thumb, adatsi pyrin, until the nail. What does that mean? What if somebody lets his fingernail grow very long? So do you go to the tip of his fingernail? Says the Chavetz Chaim, adatsi pyrin, makaim hashave labasar. It means at the tip of the finger, where the flesh of the finger, where the nail is level with the flesh of the finger. Continues the Mechaber. Actually, not the Mechaber. Top line in the Shulchan Aruch of Pei, Zaman Aleph, the words of the Ramah Haga. How precisely do you measure these distances? Again, the hole has to be not higher than three finger breadths off the bottom, not lower than the tip of the thumb. To the bottom of the baguette. How do you measure this? Says the Rama Umaydidinze, we make these measurements biyoshir, going in a straight line, Veloiba Alachsain Minakeren. We do not go at an angle from the corner. What the Rama means is like this. Let's say this is the baget that we're dealing with. And over here we have a corner. You know what? Since I have my trusty ruler, I might as well draw some lines. Bear with me for a second. Okay. Oh, wow. It's very bright. You could barely see it. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, there you go. So let's say this, this right angle that I drew over here, okay, this is the corner of the baguette that we're dealing with. Now, we have to measure three finger breaths off the bottom, and we also have to measure, it can't be higher than that, but it also can't be lower than the tip of the thumb. Says the Ramah, when we make these measurements, we have to measure going straight. So if we want to get a horizontal axis of where the hole should be, and by a horizontal axis, what I mean is, you see here, I have a horizontal line going through the hole. 
To arrive at that horizontal axis, we have to take the thumb tip and go straight up from the bottom of the beged, measure straight up to get the line where the hole cannot be lower than that. Now, we also want to know it can't be more than three at spice high. So again, the three at spice, we have to measure them going straight from the bottom of the beggar. What we can't do is go at an angle off the corner so that we come from the corner and we angle in towards the hole to try to arrive. So we'll take the thumb, the tip of the thumb and we'll put it at the corner and go at a diagonal and try to ascertain where the hole should be based, based that way. And the reason we can't do that is because, look, you see my pen? My pen right now is going, is level with the, vert, with the horizontal line that I have there. But look what happens if I turn my pen at an angle. You see now it's lower. So by doing that, I minimize the measurement Instead, the, the measurement, if I go at an angle from the corner, I'm actually going to end up closer to the bottom of the beged than if I go straight. And that's why it's a problem. So again, says the Ramah, And says the Mishnah, You have to go straight. Pirish, misfasa beged, from the edge of the beged, Maidadim biyosher. We have to measure in a straight line, the three finger breaths from the edge going up to arrive at the maximum height. And so too, the measurement of the thumb tip. We also have to do that going straight to arrive at the minimum distance from the bottom of the beged. And this is true. It doesn't matter if we're trying to arrive at the horizontal axis to access to give us the maximum and the minimum height or the vertical axis coming off the side of the beggar. See that vertical axis. If we're coming off the side, we also have to know the maximum distance from the side and the minimum distance from the side. Same way there's a maximum and minimum from the bottom, there's a maximum and a minimum from the side. Either way, we have to measure straight, not at an angle. Because if we go at an angle, the measurement is actually going to be less by approximately two-fifths. Okay. Now we go to Sif Yud. Second line in the Shachar Aruch of Be'ez Amal Alf. Let's say you affixed the tzitzitz in the proper place on the beged, you went higher than the minimum distance off the bottom edge of the beged, right? So the minimum distance off the bottom edge is the tip of the thumb. You made sure to go higher than that. So you put it in the proper place and you put it lower than, th than three finger breaths. So you're in the sweet spot. You're higher than a thumb tip and you're lower than three finger breaths. Everything seems roses. So what went wrong? Says the Mechaber, Vinitku Mechute Ha'eriv. And now, some of the warp threads of the garment, and I'm going to explain this in a moment, came out. They ripped. Ad Shaloi Nishar Bai Kishir. And now you no longer have the proper measure, measurement. Kosher, the talus is nevertheless kosher. What the Mechaber means, and I don't know why the Mechaber wrote it in such a, a technical and difficult to understand way. We know that a woven garment is comprised of warp threads, that's the shesi, and weft threads, that's the erif. Now, I always, my simon to remember which one is the warp and which one is the weft is when we think of an erif in terms of Shabbos, when we think of an erif, what do we think of? We think of a, two lechis and a string going across. And we refer to it as the Erev string. Which way does the Erev string go? The Erev string is horizontal. The Erev string goes from left to right. Or right to left. What rhymes with left? Weft. Erev. The Erev string is the weft. And it's the horizontal string. So if you're imagining a talus cotton, 
The Erev strings are the strings that go across your body. The Shesi strings, that's the warp. The Shesi strings go along your height. Says the Mechaber like this. Let's say in the length of your talus cotton, you affixed the tzitzit in the perfectly proper place. You made sure to go a thumb tip higher than the bottom edge of the baguette, and you made sure not to go higher than three finger breaths off the bottom of the baguette. But then you know what happened? All the way down at the bottom edge of the baguette, some of the Erev strings, those are the strings, the horizontal strings of the weave of the baguette, they came out. So now at the bottom of the baguette, you don't have woven fabric anymore at the bottom of the baguette. At the bottom of the baguette, you have maybe loose chassis strings, but you have no Erev strings anymore. And essentially, halakhically, what has now happened is the baguette has become shorter. So originally, you made sure when you put the tzitzits on the baguette, your tzitzits were distanced the proper minimum amount off the bottom edge of the baguette. But now after you made the tzitzits, the baguette became shorter. And now the hole is located less than the minimum distance away from the bottom of the baguette. Is that a problem? Is your towels cut now puzzle? When you made it, it was kosher. When you made it, it was the proper distance away from the baguette, from the bottom of the baguette. But now something came off of the bottom of the baguette. So now the tzitzit are less than a thumb tip away from the bottom of the baguette. Now does it become puzzle? There's another very practical way that this could happen, which the Mishnah Brewer is going to note. Let's say you put the tzitzit through the hole in the baguette, and again, the hole is in the perfect place. But then you know what happened? The hole ripped. You got a slit from the bottom of the hole going down, and now the tzitzit fell through. And now the tzitzit are closer to the edge of the baguette than they should be. Are the tzitzit now puzzle? So let's see what the Mechaber says here. Again, Sif Yud. If the tzitzits were properly distanced away from the edge of the bottom of the baguette, they were more than a thumb tip away. But v'nitku mechute erev. But now some of the horizontal erev threads of the weave of the baguette came out. Ad kishir. And now you don't have, an, the baguette became shorter. And now you don't have the minimum shear from the hole to the bottom of the baguette. Kosher, nevertheless, the tzitzits are kosher. Why? Explains the Mechaber. Kevin shahaya by kishir b'shosheh hitl by tzitzitzeh. Since when you made the tzitzits, they were made b'kashras, they remain kosher. And like the Mishnah is going to say, we learn out from the Pasuk that all you need is that the asiyah should be made b'kashras. As long as the asiyah was made b'kashras, as long as when you made the tzitzits, you had that minimum distance from the tzitzits to the bottom of the baguette, the tzitzits remained kosher, even if you cut off a piece of the baguette, and now the tzitzits are too close to the bottom, or if the hole rips open so the tzitzits fall down closer to the bottom of the baguette, it doesn't matter. Even though you don't have a thumb tip anymore, it doesn't matter. You only needed to have that thumb tip distance when you made the tzitzits. But once they're made, it remains okay. Says Ramah Haga, the Nayagin Lasa's Imra Savevanekev, Ramah says, our minig is to make like a hem, to make like a double stitch, to make a, a, a rim around the hole. Shaloyin not take sham, so that we shouldn't run into this problem. The hole shouldn't rip open. The year pockets be kashir, and then we end up with the tzitzits being lower than the minimum shear. We don't want that to happen, even though it's kosher. Even with the evidence, it's kosher. Even look at Chila, I think it's kosher. But still, we don't want it to happen. The Mishnah is going to say, Marasayin, etc., etc. So we don't want it to happen. So we make an Imra. We make like a, a seam. We reinforce the seam around the edge of the hole. So it shouldn't rip. The Chain is similarly, says the Mechaber, says the Ramah, Oisin Imra Bisfasa Beged. We also make a stitched um, edging at the end of the beged lamata at the bottom, may I time it for this reason, so it shouldn't tear going up. 
says the Mishnabur. Vinitku, some of the threads of the Erev came out. Vahuadinim nikrabahanekev, or if the hole ripped. So that the tzitzes are hanging down too low and you don't have the minimum distance from the bottom of the beggar to the tzitzes. And this is true even if this happened immediately. You affixed the tzitzes to the talus, you tied a knot, and you started making the coils, and then it happens. It's still kosher. Some of the Arab strings came out and now that you took the Arabs, that the Arab strings came out, essentially the beged is halachically shortened. The Ramah said that this is kosher anyway. The Machaber said it's kosher anyway. Why? Because. The tzitzits were kosher, they were in the right place when you put them on. When you affixed them to the beged, you affixed them to the So it remains kosher. Says the Mishmarai's Kapnun, Bisha, Ukroxiv, and in the Pasuk it says, Va'asu lehem tzitzis al-kan They should make for themselves tzitzis al-kan fevigdeim. Lo yikpi de taira elu shebishas asiya yiu al When do we have this hakpada? That the tzitzes have to be al kanfei big dayhem. And remember, that's where we learned the shiurim from. It can't be too high because it's not al knaf. It's not on the kanaf. It's on the beget. It can't be too low because it's, then it's not al kanfei. Then it's bitachas la kanaf. So we learned out the shiurim from this pasuk. And says the Chavetz Chaim, what does it say? Va'osu lahem tzitzes. It has to be kosher b'shas asiya. V'loyachakach, but not after that. However, this only applies to tzitzits that were tied on to the beged, bekashras. This applies to tzitzits that were tied on to the beged when the when the hole was in the proper place. But let's say you put the tzitzits in the right place, and then the hole ripped open. So it's kosher. Now, a year later, you want to take off the tzitzes and put on new tzitzes. You can't put on new tzitzes with the hole ripped open because then the asiya is going to be b'psol. So if you take off the old tzitzes and you want to put on new tzitzes, you got to re-sew up that rip and then you can put on new tzitzes. And then even if it rips again, it'll still be kosher. So what happened was if the hole ripped open and now it's pachas mikashir, you have less than the minimum distance from the tzitzit to the bottom edge of the baget. After the yevit kosher, even though this is kosher, mikamakim tev lasis kein kadesh alayavayu arayim loymershu pasal. Still and all, says the chavetz chaim, um, we make a rim around the hole. We make a reinforced seam around the edge of the hole, so that this shouldn't happen. Even though if it happens, it's kosher, we don't want it to happen. It's good to make the reinforced edging. So that an Amaritz who looks at you and sees that the hole is ripped open and the tzitzes are hanging down, he shouldn't say that you're wearing tzitzes that aren't kosher. Because there are a lot of Amaratsim, unfortunately, and they're not going to understand that it could be kosher. Okay. Continues the Mechaber near the end of Sif Yud. One, two, three, four, five lines off the bottom near the end of the line. Yesh Oymrim, the Mechaber brings down a Yesh Oymrim, Shebeseich, Reichava Beged, Ein Loi Sher, that when it comes to the width of the Beged, with the positioning of the hole along the width, there are those that say that there is no measurement of how close to the side edge or how far distanced from the side edge the tzitzis could be. The yeshayrim, on the other hand, there are others that say, shedin reich ha'vabegit kedin ha'oreich, that the halacha that applies to the width applies to the length. The nirin divrayin, and the mechaber says that his, their words appear true to him. What the mechaber is discussing is like this. We just learned that when it comes to the height of the beget, there's a minimum share. 
the tzitzits have to be located at least within. No, I'm sorry. The 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 tzitzits have to be affixed to the beged at least a thumb tip away from the bottom. So at minimum, it has to be a thumb tip raised above the bottom edge, but it cannot be higher than three finger breaths off the bottom edge. That's what we learned the shiurim on. Now, how about from the side? How about from the side of the begin? Is there a maximum and a minimum where the tzitzits could be affixed? How close or how far distanced from the side of the beged? So that's where this machlaikis that the Mechaber brings down applies. The Mechaber fr- first brought down a Yeshimrim that said, no, when it comes to the sides, there is no minimum, there is no maximum. Why? So it could be that the reason why is because we learned it out from for us who um, al kanfei big dayim that the tzitzis have to be al hakonof. There are those that want to learn that al hakonof, whether it's on the corner or under the corner, that only applies in height. It doesn't apply sideways. Sideways, we're not going to call something on the knaf or under the knaf. And therefore, there is a sheet that says that it doesn't apply to the width. But however, on the other hand. There are those that say that the same halacha applies in both directions, the Nirin, the Vrahim, and the Mechavah says that that seems proper in his eyes. Eyes cut on bays, yesh, oimrim, there are those that say that when it comes to the width, there is no shear. Tisvir luhu, because they hold the ikr shem knaf, shayach al safa tachta in shal arach abegad, loya rech of abegad. What do we call the width of the Begad? When we speak about the width of the Begad, we mean the part of the Begad that goes along your height. And the length of the Begad, Roich have a beged. We're talking about the length and the width. Says the Chavetz Chaim. Roich have a beged. What's the width of the beged? Karoi mashia malubish by adam kaimasai me roish alaraglov. That's what covers the height of the person. Vairich have beged. The length of the beged. Karoi mashia misatif by the derech itav hu baha irich. I have to analyze these words over here. I'm drawing a blank at precisely what this means. But the halacha is as I described it to you that. Everybody agrees that off the bottom edge of the beged, we can't go higher than three finger breaths. We can't go lower than a thumb tip. The question is off the side of the beged. Do you also need a thumb tip away from the side and not more than three finger breaths from the side? Or are the shiurim different? And we'll have to see that. Nun gimel ain't like shared. There are those that say that there is no shear. Hainu lamata. The yachalase safilapachas bikeshar gudl. Okay, we'll continue with this next time. We're going to stop over here with Sifian Aleph, the Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, Yeshua, Sarfuas, Paranasa, Shadukhub, Dolov, Zedin. We should be excited to see the B.S. Carl Tzedek. Amen. Be well.